module on HR for non-HR managers. We are uh, in this particular topic discussing about recruitment and selection and we are saying recruitment involves the attraction of suitable candidates to vacant positions both internally and externally uh, to the organization. So what we by essence we mean here is that recruitment is that process that uh, you as the HR manager or the organization uh, advertises for a job or a position then you invite candidates to apply for that particular uh, position. So th this is uh, very very important uh, because we cannot be able to move to selection and we have not uh, conducted the recruitment process. And then we are also saying selection involves choosing the suitable candidates attracted via the recruitment process. So selection is now the process of choosing the best or what we are just calling the suitable uh, candidate. We look at now factors influencing the need for recruitment. What are the things that we need to do? The first one is expansion and growth. That would be a reason why we need to bring in or advertise new positions in an organization. Maybe we want to grow, we want to open new branches. Uh, the second one is about uh, uh, separations. Uh, separation. Uh, voluntary quits, death, those are incidences that might occur and by that uh, we mean that uh, if those incidences occur, somebody has quit, somebody has died, somebody has uh, retired, somebody has been retrenched, that is a situation that would warrant uh, the organization to think about uh, recruitment. Mergers and takeovers, mergers is a situation uh, when organizations come together to become one and a, a takeover, a bigger organization uh, takes over the running of a smaller organization. So when those particular processes or business actions are taking place, then recruitment is quite, quite an essential activity for any organization to be able to do. Then we look at the factors influencing the need for recruitment as a continuation, setting up of a new enterprise. Maybe we are opening up a new company. The other one is changes in technology and methods of operations when we have new computers, new machines. Uh, the other one is restructuring and re-engineering. The other one is introduction of uh, new products and services. Then we also look at uh, sources of qualified personnel or what we can also call the sources of recruitment. We have what we call internal and external uh, sources of recruitment. So we look specifically at the internal sources of recruitment. We have, uh, so this one uh, are internal, we are saying internal sources of recruitment refers to hiring of employees within an organization internally. So the examples, the, the methods that are indicated here from letter A are the examples of now how we can recruit internally. The first one is promotion, so we can upgrade an employee from a lower cadre to a higher cadre. That is an example of internal recruitment. Then we have transfers. So we interchange from one job to another. Uh, and then we have recruitment, recruiting from former employees. So employees are called back depending upon the requirement. For example, like I've been giving this particular example during COVID, there are some employees that organizations released we can be able to recall them. So we have not advertised, we just recall. So and so was here, we can recall them back. Then recruitment from former employees. Recruiting former employees is a process of internal recruitment. Yeah, so that one, uh, we have just mentioned about it. So we we recall them. Uh, the other one is employee referrals. Employee re referrals is an effective way. So we, by this we are saying we use those that are within to be able to to be able to uh, suggest to us probable candidates and we also have previous applicants most of the time I'm sure once uh, a candidate takes an application to an organization and there is no position uh, what the most organizations do is to tell you to leave your documentation so they can review that they can 
look at their CV banks or where they store their CVs and they can be able to re retrieve some of those applications. So how do we benefit when we carry out uh, internal recruitment? The first one is better motivation of employees because there is capabilities uh, or their capabilities are considered and opportunities offered for promotion. So when we recruit from within, it is a source of motivation. Somebody knows that at some point I will also be able to move up the ladder. The other one is better utilization of employees because the company can often make use or make better use of their abilities in a different job. So employees will tend to be fully utilized because already you have been in the system and the organization knows your abilities. So when they are looking for you as a probable candidate of a higher position, they already know uh, your abilities. Uh, the third one is the employer is in a better position to evaluate those presently employed than the outside candidate. That's okay also. When you are a candidate who has already been within the organization, whoever is uh, in charge of recruitment or the HR manager or the organization management already has uh, appraisal reports about your abilities. So it becomes easier for them to, to be able to uh, consider you. The other one, it is uh, more reliable because a present employee is known more thoroughly than an external uh, candidate. So the organization is familiar with you and they know uh, what you can be able to offer in terms of skill. The other one is that it promotes loyalty among employees or it gives them a sense of job security and opportunities for advancement. So when you are a loyal employee, it means that you, you are remaining with the organization. You have stood with the organization in good and bad times. So we can consider you for a possible uh, position if we are using the internal recruitment method. It's a continuation of the advantages still. Uh, a present employee is more likely to stay with the company than an external candidate. That's okay because, of course, the, the present employee knows uh, the strong areas and the weak areas of the organization and for the weak areas they have been able to uh, be patient when a new employee comes and for example they find that maybe uh, the, the salary is not timely they will be tempted to quit maybe from wherever they are coming from things are uh, not that way the other one is it is quicker and cheaper of course so that one will take shorter time and also it's not expensive like uh, when we are going to advertise and we are looking for recruitment agencies to be able to do these things. The other one is since those employees are fully aware and well of, acquainted with the organization and policies and operating procedures, they require little training or even induction. That's correct. They are already aware of the system, how it works. So for them, it is easier uh, to be able to uh, understand the system. The other one is more accurate data and, and available concerning current employees, thus reducing the chances of making a wrong decision. So uh, the data for employees is readily available uh, because these current employees have been there. And lastly, full utilization of the abilities of the organization employees improves the organization return on investment. Uh, this takes into consideration that organizations have a sizable investment in their workforce. So recruiting internally, we are also giving an opportunity of the current uh, employees that we have to be able to get into a higher position. We continue to fully utilize them. Of course, the organization benefits and also at the individual level, the employee also benefits. Some of the challenges or disadvantages of uh, internal recruitment, uh, the first one is it leads to inbreeding and discourages new blood from joining the organization. So what happens in inbreeding? We are simply recycling and using the same people. Mm. So these same people may not inject new blood into the organization. They are used to a particular system and they would not want to change. They want it to remain that way. Mm. So we want to do recruit internally, but in essence, when it comes to work, it may not be like we foresee. 
The other one is infighting for promotions can become overly intense and have a negative effect on the morale and performance of people who are not promoted. Yeah, so people within the organization will fight for these positions. Everyone wants to be the one that is considered for the position. So those conflicts, of course, affect the productivity of those employees. The other one is that there are possibilities that internal sources of uh, recruitment, of course, may dry up. Eh? So we, the organization may not, uh, for many years, continue to rely on internal recruitment. Over and over again, uh, things happen. And you may be forced to look outside for staff. The other one is, as promotion is uh, mostly based on seniority, the danger is that really capable people may not be chosen for promotion. The likes and dislikes of the management may also play an important role on the selection of the personnel. So most organizations are adopting uh, this promotion based on seniority. So we can have somebody who may not be termed as a very senior or even a new staff, but they, in terms of ability, they are well able to execute their duties. Uh, disadvantages, it is seldom contributes to new ideas or innovation that may be very important for the so we have talked about that, no new ideas. Internal sources sh should not only be used if the vacancy to be filled is within the capacity of the present employees and if adequate uh, records have been maintained. So we can only use these when we have enough information about the, the present employees. The other one is if an organization promotions promotes from within, it needs a strong employee management development program uh, to be able to uh, continue to use this particular method. So and employees, if we are supposed to use this, employees need to continually be trained, which is of course, like uh, I have said, it is quite costly. Then we look at the external sources, we have, we have uh, the direct method. So that one is sorting, sourcing employees now from outside the organization. We have direct recruitment. Uh, we, we source recruitment where qualified candidates are done by placing a notice on the, of the vacancy yeah? on the notice board in the organization or even outside the organization or in newspapers. Then we can also use employment agencies. Uh, we can also use advertisements. Uh, we also use professional associations. Uh, employees are members of professional bodies. If you are an accountant, you are a member of ASPAC. If you are a human resource manager, you are a member of IHRM or Institute of Human Resource Management. Uh, campus recruitment. So this one involves you visit uh, institutions of higher learning like Musk College where you can be able to seek uh, staff. Disadvantages, the pool of talent is much larger yeah, compared to internal sources. Uh, external sources provide personnel. Yeah, so these ones are the advantages. Employees hired from outside can bring new insights and perspectives. The other one is that it is cheaper to hire. Uh, managerial and technical uh, staff. So these are now the disadvantages. Uh, attracting and contacting, evaluating potential employees is, is difficult. Employees hired from outside ne need longer adjustment period. Another disadvantage is recruiting externally may cause morale problems among employees within the organization. Uh, another one is uh, method may be expensive and time consuming. We have mentioned that because of the aspect of continually advertising. And lastly, there is uncertainty due to changes in demand and supply in the labor market. So you can read around uh, recruitment and try to understand the discussions around internal and external recruitment.